Hi Bruins, welcome to Gravity and Kinetic Energy post-test review. Um, I'm going to ask you to go ahead and answer these questions on a separate sheet of paper. Um, you won't get to use this paper during the test, but you can use whatever you brought with you on a, a separate sheet of paper to use on the test. So let's go ahead and get started and take a look at question number one. What is the equation used to calculate speed? If we go to page 22 in our interactive notebook, we can look that up fairly easily. And speed is equal to distance divided by time. And then below that, you'll see the different variations of the speed formula. Question number two. How does gravity affect the motion of an object during a fall? Well, Gravity is about 9.8 meters per second squared, or um, 10 meters per second squared, if we want to use a nice round number. So if, for instance, I were to um, roll a ball to the edge of a building's roof, what do you think is going to best describe the motion of the ball after it passes the edge of the roof? And we would expect that the ball would fall with a speed that increases by about 10 meters per second per second or accelerates at that speed of gravity or acceleration of gravity until obviously it reaches terminal velocity, meaning it can't go any faster or it hits the ground. Okay, let's take a look at question number three. Um, it says, draw an example data set for the following scenario, an object traveling at a constant speed of 20 kilometers per hour starts to slow after two seconds. The force continues to act on the object for six seconds. So I drew a quick little data set here. And you'll notice, don't worry about the A there at the bottom. But if I started with zero seconds, and I was traveling at 20 kilometers per hour. At one second, traveling 20 kilometers per hour. At two seconds, 20, and then I start to slow. At three seconds, 15. At four seconds, 10. At five seconds, five. And at six seconds, zero. Doesn't necessarily matter what this data set looks like, as long as it's showing the slowing of the object. And the object doesn't have to slow to zero or a stop either. It can just slow to whatever speed, as long as the speeds after two seconds are getting consistently slower. Okay, question number four, define acceleration. Well, acceleration is just simply something that's going faster and faster. So its speed is increasing um, during each second, okay? And we can have negative acceleration, which is also called deceleration. Let's take a look at question number five. What is the weight of a mass of 2.5 kilograms on Earth, and how did you calculate that? So I'm gonna go ahead and work this out on my sheet of paper. So I have a mass of 2.5 kilograms, and I need to multiply that by the acceleration of gravity, which is 10 meters per second squared. So this is going to be a force formula. So I'm gonna use the force equals mass times acceleration. I filled in the mass, I filled in the acceleration. So my force, whoops, would equal 25 kilograms um, meters per second squared, which is very confusing. So we remember we call this unit a Newton. So my force would be equal to 25 Newtons. Okay. Draw an example, and this is number six, draw an example of kinetic and potential energy changes in a system of your choosing, greatest PE, greatest KE. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and use the example of a teeter-totter. So if I have a simple teeter-totter here, 
and it's sloped like this. And I have a mass here and a mass here. Which one's going to have the greatest potential energy and which one's going to have the greatest kinetic? So at this point, if the system is moving at this point, my greatest um, kinetic energy will be here and my lowest potential energy. And then here I will have my greatest potential energy and my lowest kinetic energy. And if you recall this, we drew these diagrams in the text that showed us where potential and kinetic energy were the greatest. Um, and I think that that was on page 63 of your interactive notebook. Okay. Um, next up, number seven, what happens to the kinetic energy of two vehicles during a collision? Draw, describe, and use vocabulary. In this particular instance, you're going to be looking at um, the transfer of energy during a collision. So if two vehicles are um, colliding head on, they're going to transfer their kinetic energy to each other. Um, if the, um, depending on the impulse, um, we'll have different types of energy being transferred. Um, and then this relates kind of to number eight. Remember that mass doubles the kinetic energy, but speed um, gets squared. So um, this is this is just a simple doubling, but this is like a two to the second power or a three to the second power, etc. Of how much the speed is affecting um, the kinetic energy. Um, number nine, um, we didn't really talk about specifically, but we did talk about it um, a bit when we were doing our science and engineering practices with the egg drop. So if we look at the types of things, um, practices performed by scientists and engineers. Um, let me find a quick list that I made. Um, so let's look at a few things. Um, so in both um, instances, okay, um, I think we would use evidence to support a solution. So if I have a scientist and I have an engineer, um, if they're both going to use evidence, oh, I should write that in the middle. Yay, Ms. Hedinger hasn't used a um, Venn diagram in a really long time. An engineer is going to be trying to solve a, perhaps like a transportation issue. Um, where a scientist might just want to be collecting data. Um, and they're both going to run several trials. Um, a scientist wants to explain the natural world. Um, and we both want, they both want to communicate their findings. And collaborate. And I think over here they're going to use a lot of criteria. 
So for example, an engineer is really just kind of trying to figure out specific criteria. Okay, so I talked about that one with you. Um, let's take a look at um, question number 10. So I'm gonna slide this up just a little bit. If weight remains the same, will the height of impact, will the height impact the amount of kinetic energy a child has sledding down a hill? Explain your answer. So basically what we're looking at is depending on where a child is placed on the hill, which one has higher kinetic energy and which one has more potential energy. This one's gonna have higher potential. This one's gonna have higher kinetic. Um, let's take a look at the next one, number 11. If a planet has a gravitational force of 0.9 gravity, describe the weight of an object on that planet compared to the weight of the object on the Earth. So if I take something that is 100 kilograms, And I'm going to do the force equals mass times acceleration, 0 0.9. So mass, acceleration, okay. And then if I look at Earth, so this is gravity. The little g's I know get really confusing, but these are gravity. And this is, let's just call it kilograms just for giggles. Um, how are those going to be different? And I'll let you do the math on that. And let's look at number 12. Describe why Newton's third law is helpful to successfully playing a billiards game. So let's go back and take a look. I'm going to look in the textbook real quickly at Newton's third law. I just need to take a moment to find it here. says for every action or force there's an equal and opposite reaction or force. Okay. So think back to when we set up the little pool table okay. and how is that helpful for every action or force there's an equal and opposite reaction or force. How is that helpful for playing a game of pool? So if I think about my pool table setup that I had, and I had my little target cubes, and I had my ramp, and I had my um, my target cube here, and then I had my ramp cube up here, and as I rolled it down, Okay, what happened to this cube when I was trying to get it to go through here? What did I need to do? Okay. And how does Newton's third law describe that? And one more time, it is for every action or force, there's an equal and opposite reaction or force. And then next one is to show the energy transfer during a billiards game. So where is the energy going in these different places? So we have our ramp cube, our target cube. Um, we have the friction on the felt. Okay, and then number 14, if two objects of the same mass are going the same speed, describe their kinetic energy. Well, if two objects of the same mass are going the same speed, they're going to have the same kinetic energy. All right, number 15, describe if and how gravity can impact potential energy on Earth and on the moon. Well, what this is asking you to think about is 
if I'm standing on the moon, I'm gonna draw you a little diagram here. So I have one person standing on the moon, little bitty moon, and I have one person standing on the earth, okay? And both these people are gonna drop an object the same height how is gravity, so we have less gravity, more gravity, how's that going to affect the potential energy of the object in their hand? So like for instance, if I was holding a book in my hand, the same height on both the moon and on the earth, how is that going to affect the potential energy of the book? Well, obviously there's going to be less acceleration due to gravity on the moon, so the book would have less potential energy on the moon because of the lower force of gravity than it would on Earth where there's a greater force of gravity or a greater acceleration due to gravity. Okay, number 16, draw a graph that shows four runners position over time. Runner A is slow and then speeds up. Runner B has a constant speed but is slower than runner C. Runner C has the fastest average speed. Runner D only runs part of the race at a pace between C and B. So basically, you're going to be looking for a graph that looks something like this and let me just show you real quickly so we have runner a who is slow and then speeds up we have runner b who's running at a constant speed but is actually slower than runner C. Runner C has the fastest average speed. And then runner D only runs part of the race at a pace between C, B, and C, if that makes sense. And then what you need to do is describe how you made the graph portion for each runner listed. So why does this graph look the way that it does? Um, if runner A is going really slow and then speeds up, what does that look like? If runner B has a constant speed but is slower than runner C, runner C has the fastest average speed and runner D only runs part of the race at a pace between C and B. Okay. Okay. 